I want to welcome you back to our final module in our computer concepts, computer literacy, whatever you want to call it series. This is module six, security and safety. And I want to be really clear, this is my jam. This is where I'm spending most of my time. This is where my interest lies as it pertains to technology and being a technology profession professional and professor today. Oh man, gosh, I hope I can talk through this video. Anyway, it is so important these days with everything that we're doing on the computer that we protect ourselves, that we protect not only our personal data, but the data of the companies that we work for, that we understand the risks, that we do our part in educating ourselves and protecting the assets, whether they're personal or professional, that we in fact interact with on computers. Now understand this can be as simple as you know, all of your digital pictures of your kids and your family. This can be your social media sites. Uh, recently, someone that's very close, dear and near to me had their social media sites hacked. And when I inquired with them, well, how is it they hacked all these sites? The answer was simple. Well, I actually use the same password for all of my social media sites. So that made perfect sense how the hacker was able to just go in, do some Google searching, find out what social media sites this person used, and hack them all. So let's take a look at what we're gonna cover. In this lesson or in this module, there's two main sections, computer safety and health risks, and protective measures to safeguard computers and data. So I've broken this down into four parts. We're gonna cover part 1A now with computer safety and health risks. In this section, we're gonna look at operating system market share, risks to computer security and safety. So let's just dive right in. If it sounds like I'm excited about this topic, it is because I am. I think that there's the most value I can offer you, whether you're watching this as a student, whether you're watching this just to watch it, is to really make you understand and frankly, do it through some fear tactics. I'm gonna be very clear that you understand the risks that you're incurring and what you can do to protect yourself. So I think it starts with this. You'll notice this slide that starts with January 13, goes to July 19, and what it indicates is the worldwide market share, global market share of the main five operating systems or the main four plus the whatever's left market share of operating systems. So clearly what you see is Windows, you know, back in 2013 had a 90% market share and now it looks like they're just under 80%, maybe 78%. We see some growth within the Mac OS X market. We see a little bit of growth within Linux. I happen to think we'll see more growth in Linux and we're definitely going to see more growth in Chrome OS. Now what's funny is I don't necessarily agree. I didn't do this. You know, a statistics company, it's down below okay, created this chart. I'm not sure I agree with this Chrome OS. I think we're gonna see Chrome OS grow, but who knows? The big key to take away from this is Windows and Mac hold the primary market share, hold up to 90% combined. And as you can see, the majority of that is in Windows. And the reason why that's important, let me go ahead and get this idea off the table now. <laughs> if I'm a hacker, I want to hack the most pop popular operating system, the most popular program, the most popular social media site. Why do I want to do that? And by the way, hack the most popular people. The reason I want to do that is my own impact. So if I want to hack an operating system, I want to hack Windows. I want to find a vulnerability in Windows that is going to affect the most people. But Apple folks, I, I hear you all the time say, well, that's the reason Apple is safer. No, Apple is not safer. There's just not a lot of hackers hacking Apple. They're not gonna impact the biggest number of people, but that doesn't mean that hackers don't exist. That doesn't mean that Apple hasn't released major and pushed out security fixes just like Microsoft does because of the fact that their operating system is vulnerable and vulnerabilities are being found literally every day. Just this week, Windows released a important pushed um, fix to their operating system because the risk was so great to that 78% of the market you see. So risk to computer security, as we look at this, three main are information, 
Information being everything we store on the computer. Remember data. A picture is information. The data behind the pictures is the ones and zeros that then are used to create the picture. But pictures are information. From a picture, I can tell where you are right now if you post it on social media. If you haven't turned off the location services, the metadata of that picture, I might be able to look at that and see the longitude and latitude of exactly where you are in the world. That's information. Information and in reports, information and bank accounts. We then look at the environment. So remember, as you get rid of a computer, where is that computer going? Are you giving it to somebody else? Are you recycling it? Are they utilizing it for a few more years? But eventually, where does it end up? And it probably ends up in a landfill someplace. And a lot of times, it's not within our own country in the United States. Other countries are taking on and storing because they have less EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, rules than we do in the US. And it is costly to take apart and recycle our digital assets. Now remember, this isn't just computers. These are all the phones. Think about every two years when you get a new phone because you want the latest and greatest technology. And then of course, just as important is our health. Now as I do this video, I'm actually standing at a stand-up desk. Um, the screen is at my height, which means it's lower than everybody else and I am producing this video. I'm making sure that, that my hands and my arms are at good, safe angles, as you see up here in the right, okay? Now, even this, some people would, this image, some people would say, whoa, wait a minute, this laptop should be up higher so that the view is here and not down here, that the view is straight across so I can keep my head and my neck straight, if you will. So these are things to consider as we look at risks of computers. So risk to self, risk to data, and then of course environmental risk. As we look at the main risk, it's things like attackers. People who are trying to get in and attack our computers to steal data, to encrypt data, to um, get into information that they can use to somehow profit. Profit if it is to hold a ransom, meaning hold our computers ransom. We'll talk more about that profit of stealing data that companies are willing to buy so that they know what your browsing history is, so that they know what your browsing um, practices are, what sites you're going to, etc. Now, script kitties, and I use this, this little picture sort of as a joke, but script kitties are individuals who don't write the code. They just borrow, they steal, or they pay for malicious code and execute it to do the same thing, to steal data, if you will, to bring down networks. There was an example where a high school student went on the dark web, bought a piece of software that would create an internal attack on a local area network. He installed it on his high school network. It took down the network. He didn't have to take final exams. Of course, the issue is they did forensics. They found out which computer it on uh, was implemented on, who did it, and there you go. The student got caught. Hacktivists are attackers who strongly motivated by principles or beliefs. Sometimes these are paid people, okay, who are paid to attack systems because of a political, make political statements, take over websites. Um, I've given you the, the example of Anonymous. They are a huge group of hackers, if you will, that do a lot of things in the internet. So some of them are hacktivists. They're hacking because they don't believe in public policy. They don't believe in you know gun control or abortion or whatever the hot topic is, all the way down to let's just hack in and see what kind of havoc we can create so that people realize that systems where they're storing important data like social security, IRS has been hacked, um, that that data is in fact very insecure, unsecure, sorry, unsecure, if you will. So I would be insecure about putting my data out there. Cyber terrorists attack a nation's computer network to cause corruption and panic. Frankly, just recently, for what is said to be the first time, the United States went on an offensive and attacked Iranian um, aviation systems to show that we were in those systems and to quit messing with us. So it was a quick attack. We took it over and then gave back. 
but it was like that four shot warning. It's like, you know, sending that one missile to attack one thing to say, hey, we're here and we're ready to fight. And please realize folks that cyber today is a huge area of warfare. There's a bunch of books and techniques being being written on cyber warfare and the idea that, that war is going on right now between countries. Russia interacting, whatever you wanna say, with our um, presidential elections. Maybe that's even war. That's for you to decide. Nation state actors, governments are now employing state-sponsored attackers. So, you know, <laughs> let's be really clear. We're most likely doing it. Every country's doing it. We are actually employing people who are attacking other countries, finding vulnerabilities, creating what's called zero-day vulnerabilities. Those are vulnerabilities that aren't public, that that people don't know about. They're back doors, if you will, until those patches are fixed, okay? We have access that no one else knows we have. And if we're doing it, so are other countries. And we're using folks like nation state um, actors to do that kind of work. Insiders, let's not forget about companies, that you know, companies and data for companies can be priceless. Okay, company data at Google. Google constantly has to think about security, who's being hired, who's being fired. Does this person, in fact, is the person being paid to work at Google by Google, but they're being paid by selling what they learn at Google to some other competitor. And that happens in all businesses, by the way. So keep that in mind. Risk to computer security. Now again, remember the reason why these, these slides are wordy is because I want you to pause, I want you to read what's here and then hear what I have to say to add to your knowledge, okay? And then of course, I give these to my students to use as study guides. So online banking, attackers try to steal your password to access your online banking account, transfer your money overseas. Of course, as soon as they transfer money into another account, there's usually someone called a mule, just like if you think about drug mules who you know take drugs over the border. There's a mule that goes in with the debit card, withdraws the cash, and as soon as it's turned into cash, it's literally untraceable. And then that person, knowing who they're dealing with, bad people that they're dealing with, organized crime people that they're dealing with, go ahead and do a wire transfer or put the money into another account that's not linked most likely at another bank, so we can't see the money came in, the money came out, okay? Or they simply wire the funds uh, overseas. E-commerce shopping, when we think about that, you know, you hear about it all the time that, you know, Citibank got hacked and 150,000 credit card numbers were stolen. That means 150,000 people have to get new credit cards. Think of the expense of producing the new credit card, of monitoring, do, doing uh, credit protection for those people or credit monitoring. They don't do protection. They just monitor the credit and tell you, hey, by the way, um, it seems like our information that got stolen was used here. You might want to make more changes. Fake websites where attackers, you'll see down at the bottom. I have a great video on YouTube um, that YouTube doesn't like, but that's okay. If you notice, I got a, a link that said, hey, you should change your blockchain information. And what you'll see in that video, if you choose to watch it, is that these sites look exactly the same. They even use the same sub sites and the same login, but notice this one is HTTPS bloke chain, not block chain. So they just change the, you know, uh, C to an E, they have a fake website. And if I was to log in, they would have the username and password for my blockchain, which means they could go ahead and clear out my Bitcoin value in literally seconds. And that's happened to folks. It's definitely happened to folks that have used gone to cafes and logged in. And we'll look at that in a minute, how to be on protected Wi-Fi. Social media sites taking over your site, pretending to be you, pretending to be a friend, creating false, um, false sites. We see this all the time right now on dating sites. People are vulnerable when they're dating. Um, somebody creates a fictitious profile you start friending this person, you feel like you, you get to know this person, and then this person says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really in a hurtful way. Boy, I could really use $100 to help me out. And next thing you know, people are giving $100 to someone they've never even met in person that they think they know online. 
So I've even gone ahead and helped folks take pictures from those sites. You can actually search Google for images, by the way. So what you do is you take that image, you search Google for that image, you find it someplace else, and you find out that here it's Susan Miller, and over here it's you know Becky Duran, who you know lives in Texas while you live in the state of Washington. So easy things you can do to make sure that you're talking to legitimate people. And of course, the biggest thing is meet them online and get to see them in person quickly, even if it's a FaceTime. Data mining, so just sorting through data you know, to get information. Companies will pay for that data. Um, that's where tracking cookies come in, is mining data, figuring out what websites you're going to, how long you're there, what you're doing on those websites, all of those things. So protecting personal information, we're gonna talk a lot about that. You know, give only necessary information when completing an online forum. Today, the younger generations seem to just wanna share their entire life online. They are definitely at more risk than those that grew up saying, privacy is important and I'm gonna think about my privacy. You wanna review your information that online sites such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and others have stored about you. So. Again, a lot of times the information Facebook has, they have because you gave it to them. You posted your likes and your dislikes and you posted your friends and you posted who you're in a relationship with and all of that. You posted that party you went to on Friday night. Maybe marijuana is legal in your state and, you know, and there's a picture of you smoking marijuana. Keep in mind that today human resources departments will do Google searches on you. You've made that data public they can go look at it. What are they going to see? Folks, since I'm dealing with college students, when you're getting ready to look for a job, I highly, highly can want you to consider, go out, look at all those sites, look at all your pictures, see what needs to be brought down should an HR department look at that or privatize your account, even better. Request to be removed from ra mailing lists. Now, I don't agree with this one. That's why it says nope. When you go to ask to be removed from a mailing list, they have to remove you, but then they know there's a real person behind that email and thus the value of your email goes up and they can turn around and make money instead of you being on their mailing list by giving your information to one of their associated partners who can then spam you twice as much. So definitely consider that. Just right click, stick it in junk and don't worry about it. Create another email bank account. Uh, to use when a merchant or website requires an address. So consequently, <laughs> something to do is to create a, a free Gmail. That's what you use when people want you to log in and create a username and password. Use that for your e-commerce. Keep your banking information, other things separate from that, and maybe even create a bank account. If you don't do this, at least know what protection your credit card company is offering you as it pertains to e-commerce, as it pertains to shopping online. Do not use social media account login information to log into another site. Folks, I don't recommend this. The reason they do this is because it's easy. And again, that social media site gets to know who your account is now associated with. So they've gone ahead, you know, Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn and GitHub, as you see here, are all sharing that information, they're making it easier, but that means they're also in partnership and association with these sites, thus collecting data about you. Just real quick, back to environmental risks before we end part 1A. You know, landfills, you know, e-waste fills landfills, it's harmful to the environment, it gives off toxic gases, not to mention the space. You know, here you see a picture uh, that most likely is from China where people are going through and taking apart massive computers because there are some valuable metals within these things, okay? But all of these plastics end up in landfills. And if you think about it, Americans generate over 9.4 million tons of e-waste each year. And if that's accurate, all of that has to be going someplace. Think about buying green, think about redonating your laptop, and definitely think about <coughs> recycling. <laughs> so sorry about that. Think about recycling your electronics, okay? Sustainable electronics management, if you're not familiar with that, go out to the epa.gov site, SMM, 
slash electronics and learn more about how you can recycle. It used to be that they would charge you to recycle. Our local recycling center will take things like computers and laptops and those things for free and they then send them to customized recycling centers who then recycle the materials and do their best to limit how much is going into those landfills. All right, that's it for part 1A. In the next part, just so we cover that, in part 1B, we're gonna look at the second part of computer safety and health risk. We're gonna discover the risks to physical behavior, social health, common cybersecurity attacks. That's what we're gonna cover. Until then, take care.